Absolutely. I'm thinking of somebody that gets their blood work done. They have the cholesterol number, they have the LDL number, and maybe their doctor might freak out, especially if those two numbers are high. What should they ask for and look at when it comes to cholesterol pertaining to LDL cholesterol? Yeah. So you really want to know what type of LDL cholesterol you have. Uh, and that's going to involve something called, uh, it's either called an advanced lipid panel, or you might hear it called an NMR panel, nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, sometimes it will be called lipofractionation. Um, but what we're trying to get at is what do those LDL particles look like? What are their sizes? Um, you can also test whether or not they're oxidized. You can do a test for oxidized LDL. Now that test is, uh, the test itself is a little problematic. And so I don't usually get that one. Uh, and we could talk about why that is. Uh, in theory, right, you do want to know about oxidized LDL cholesterol. The problem is the way that they do that test, they don't really uh, index it to how much cholesterol that you have. So if you have a lot of LDL cholesterol to start with and you get that oxidized LDL test, it may still come out in what's considered the high range, um, but you know it could still be a small percentage of your overall LDL that's oxidized and that might not be a worrisome situation. When we do carnivore diet or a keto diet, why does our cholesterol increase and our LDL increase in some people? Yeah, so, and it's key what you said at the end, in some people. Um, the studies actually show, you know, when you take a large population of people doing low carb diets, uh, on average, over the long term, the LDL actually doesn't change significantly. But there's a subset of people that have, you know, what's been called a hyper response uh, and the LDL increases. Um, it, it seems to have to do with the best explanation I've come across so far is really the one that was, you know, put forth by uh, Dave Feldman in his work, the lipid energy model, um, that when you're switching to this ketogenic metabolism and your body is using fat for energy, that fat needs to be trafficked through the bloodstream in increased amounts. And LDL cholesterol is, you know, the primary way that our body accomplishes that. And that seems to be why the LDL goes up. Now, what's important is in the vast majority of cases uh, of people that have this increased LDL, this hyper response, when you do that advanced testing, what you see is it's the large particles that have increased. It's not the small particles that have increased. And that, that explains why it doesn't seem to be problematic. Okay. So can you just um, tell us that test for the particle size that every person needs to order before they freak out about the LDL? What's the name to know those particle sizes? Yeah. Like I said, again, it's that NMR or advanced lipid panel. And, you know, there's a little bit of a caveat here. Uh, outside of the United States, uh, it can be difficult to get this test done. Uh, we, we have international clients in our uh, practice, and in a lot of countries, it's very difficult to get that test. Uh, so one of the other things we can talk about is some other tests that you can look at to at least give you an indicator as to whether or not, you know, your LDL cholesterol particles are likely to be problematic or not. Can you list those tests, please? Yeah. So you ultimately want to figure out uh, if you have inflammation and if you have insulin resistance. And if you have neither of those things, it's very good chances that your LDL is not going to be the problematic kind of LDL. Uh, so on the in inflammation side of things, the most common test I see and I recommend is what's called a C-reactive protein, CRP. Sometimes you'll see it called high sensitivity CRP or HSCRP. Uh, and that's kind of a general body inflammation marker. And uh, we want to keep that, you know, uh, and again, it might vary where you are, different units and stuff. But here in the U.S., what we tell people is you want to keep it less than one. Uh, ideally, over three is definitely problematic. 
one to three is a little bit of a gray zone, but ideally we want to keep this less than one. Uh, there are some other inflammation markers we can look at. We can look at things like uh, ferritin, which is a uh, indicator of inflammation, but also relates to your iron stores. So that one can be a little tricky sometimes. Uh, we have things like uh, there's something called an ESR, an erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It's another inflammation that you'll see uh, uh, used. Uh, some places you might see something like an IL-6, interleukin-6, used as an inflammation marker. Uh, and then uric acid. Um, uric acid, many doctors think of that in the context of gout, um, but uric acid is actually a, a decent overall inflammation marker, and we can use that as an indicator as well. So lots of options on inflammation, uh, but like I said, CRP is probably the most common one that people are going to get. Okay. The ferritin is quite interesting because I've seen some carnivals on our Go Carnival community uh, that says, that say my ferritin has really increased when I'm doing carnival. Why might that be? And also, what is the level that ferritin should be to show that you're not you don't have the inflammation. Yeah. So again, ferritin is one uh, is basically a storage form of iron in our body. So ferritin is going to be affected by how much iron you have in your body, how much iron you're eating, and you know, in a meat heavy diet, that may rise. Uh, but ferritin is also affected by inflammation, and this is why interpreting ferritin can get a little tricky. Um, when ferritin is elevated because of inflammation, it's problematic. Uh, when ferritin is elevated because your body is not processing iron correctly, uh, there's a disease called hemochromatosis, uh, where the body doesn't process iron properly and ferritin goes up. And that's problematic. That disease has been associated with heart disease. Um, however, if your ferritin is elevated because you're eating a meat-heavy diet and you don't have one of those other things, I don't think it's problematic. And I, and I also see this in uh, a fair number of my patients. And this is the reason that we check multiple inflammation markers, right? So we can get an overall picture and we're not relying on just one number. So for instance, if I have someone that their C-reactive protein is normal, and maybe their uric acid is normal, and uh, you know other inflammation markers are normal, and the ferritin is elevated, and they're on a meat-heavy diet, I'm not going to be uh, necessarily concerned about that. 